Hi, I'm Julia. Welcome to Julia Lives. Today, I'm going to give you a review of the Weber Spirit 2 E210 Gas Grill. I bought this grill at Home Depot on sale for $399, originally $499. It was no cost to have it assembled, but I did have to pick it up in the store. Now, you can have it delivered for free, but if you want it assembled, it will cost $100 to have it assembled at your house. I personally would either find a way to go pick it up or I'd pay for the assembly. I watched videos and things and read the directions and thought there's no way I want to assemble this thing. It came completely assembled. It was very easy to transport. You may have seen my video earlier this year about my new Mercedes. My son happens to drive a Toyota 4Runner, so it was easily able to fit in the back of that. We had to put it in wheels first. I'd recommend bringing bungee cords so that you can hook the, the lid or the cover down to the grill so that it's not flying back at you and you try to pick it up and load it into the vehicle. I have quite a long history with Weber, and this is actually a very entry-line grill. The first Weber grill that I ever purchased was in the late 90s. It was entirely stainless steel. It cost about $2,000, and I do believe I bought that one at Home Depot as well, but it was back when Weber was not as easily accessible as it is now. That grill would be comparable to something in the Summit series. I'm probably going to sell my house in a few years, so I decided I don't really want to get into investing in a large grill and having to deal with transporting it. However, I made a mistake with that grill. A couple of years ago, I had a family member who had what they said was a pretty new Spirit 2 grill, and they offered to trade with me. The igniter was broken on my grill. However, because it was stainless, there wasn't any rust on it whatsoever. It was in great shape. But I was kind of over it and I thought, well, it's big, it's bulky, it's getting old, the igniter's not working, maybe something else will go out on it. So I agreed to trade it. And the person who took my grill actually said, you, I believe, have a nicer grill than the one that you're getting. And they were right. Because the grill that I'm about to show you, I think it's about 10 years old, but the entire bottom rusted out on it. And so that's why I decided to get a new grill. And so the, the one that I'm going to show you is not entirely stainless. So expect some rust. I was pretty diligent about keeping it covered, but I do live in a cold weather climate where we get lots of snow. And my guess is that the bottom rusted out because of the elements and just having snow up under the cover. So let me show you that grill and then I'll show you the new grill that I just purchased. This grill has three burners. The E210 only has two burners. The igniter happened to be broken on this grill as well, so I was using this hole the entire time with a long-handled lighter to light this thing. It still works fine. It's just that it's so rusted out. You'll see the doors I had to screw on and kind of rig up. You'll see the whole grease tray rusted out and fell down. And then of course the bottom, the wheels are falling off of it because of the rust. And that's also why the doors are off. The, um, there's a little metal piece that holds the doors up and those have completely rusted off. So again, I did keep it covered, but the bottom of the grill just did not withstand. The warranty on these is about 10 years. So honestly, it was at its life expectancy anyway. I always appreciate it when you hit that like button. It does something to the YouTube algorithm so that more people will see this video who are looking for reviews of this grill. And as always, I love it when you subscribe. It helps me in the YouTube algorithm as well. And it also gives me a little bit more control over what YouTube can place on these videos for ads. This is not a massive grill with only two burners, but it's certainly fine for a family. You have a storage space underneath, but you also have hooks on the side of the grill to hang your grill brush. I would not keep my tongs or utensils outside anyway, so that's plenty of space for my needs. Again, there are two burners, three burner covers. The instruction manual suggested there would be five, but when I checked with Home Depot, the grill only comes with those three, and that's adequate when you only have two burners anyway. And certainly, again, enough space. If you're looking to host a block party, you're probably going to need a second grill to do that. Here is the grease trap. It's quite a bit smaller than the other grill. The other one had one this size plus a larger one. It does come with an aluminum foil 
insert from Weber. However, you can buy extra inserts. I have quite a variety of them from my last grill. It's so it's small, you'll have to change that quite a bit, but it is convenient. And then the next area here is a gas gauge. This is something I've never had, so it lets me know how full the tank is. This grill does not come with a tank, so keep your old tank. You hook it onto the side here, and then the weight of the tank tells the gauge when you need to replace it. So that's really handy. And again, it doesn't have to sit on the deck. This does not have a hole for igniting. It comes with a long chain where you would insert a match in the event that your igniter goes out. But I will say for the price, I found that it heats evenly, it's easy to use. Again, I didn't have to assemble it, which was awesome. And I definitely recommend this grill for a nice small grill on your patio.